Hello again, everybody. Um, it's Wednesday's lesson for week two of summer school. Um, today we are going to be continuing on with our um, topic of essay writing and essay formatting. So on Monday we went over thesis and introduction, on Tuesday we went over body paragraphs. So today on Wednesday we are going to be discussing how to write a conclusion. A lot of students struggle with the conclusion because they're like, what do I put into it? Like, this is, I'm done with my essay, I have nothing to say. Um, so I'm gonna give you a few, few things that I uh, want you to work on and that would add to the essay instead of just repeating yourself. Um, okay, so the first thing that I request be in your conclusion will be a counter argument. Now this goes for persuasive essays. If you're writing an analysis essay, which some of the older students might be writing, um, then the counter argument doesn't work so well. Um, but for a persuasive or even expository essay, a counter argument is a good thing to put in the conclusion. Some students might say, Miss, can I put a counter argument somewhere else? Yes, you can put a counter argument wherever you want. But for today's purposes, the counter argument is going to go in the conclusion just so we can practice. Um, so a counter argument is when you address the opposition, um, like the other side. So you're not going to argue both sides in your persuasive essay. That would not be effective at proving either point. It would just confuse your reader. But it is important to acknowledge the other side to show that you're educated and that you understand both sides. And then the second part of the counter argument is the refutation. So you address the other side, you acknowledge what the opposition is arguing, and then you explain why they're wrong. And that's the key right there. So you're not just laying out both sides and then expecting the reader to pick the better one or agree with you. You're laying out one point for the opposition and then clearly explaining why it is flawed or not true or wrong. Um, so. For example, if I had a thesis statement and I wrote my whole essay about how recycling should be mandatory, then I might put a counter argument in a conclusion where um, I address the other side, this side saying that recycling should be optional. So remember, my thesis for this hypothetical essay is recycling should be mandatory. My counter argument would be the opposite side. It would say, although some people say that recycling should be optional, because this law would infringe on a person's personal freedom, there are plenty of laws that limit someone's freedom for the cause of the greater good. So I have one sentence here, or even half a sentence, where I'm addressing the other side. If people think that recycling shouldn't be optional, or shouldn't be required, they think it should be optional, because they say, it's my freedom to do what I want with my own trash, um, that would be a valid point. You know how when we do our brainstorming with a T-chart and there's two sides? Um, that would be, there's recycling should be mandatory on one side and recycling should be optional on the other. So I'm giving a point that the opposition would say when I say that it would infringe someone's rights or limit someone's rights or freedoms if recycling was forced on them legally. Um, and, but then I have that second half of the sentence where I say, however, there are plenty of laws that do limit someone's right for the greater good. Like, for example... If I want to drive 120 miles per hour down the highway, that's illegal because um, other people could get hurt by my actions. So like the same logic could apply to recycling. If no one recycles and our planet just goes, falls to pieces and goes to tr burning trash, then eventually that will have ne negative impacts for future generations or current generation. Um, so that's a counter argument. My thesis, recycling should be mandatory. And then I address the opposite side saying it sh um, those people think it should be optional, but they're wrong because. Um, okay, so go ahead and pull up the counter argument document on the hub where you'll see the counter argument examples. So we're gonna go over that one. Um, so here we have a thesis for an essay that says students should be required to wear uniforms. So my counter argument to that thesis that I would include in my conclusion is some people argue that students should not be required to wear uniforms because they limit creativity and personal freedom. So I'm not putting what the other side agree or believes like I agree with it. I'm saying some people, those people over there are arguing this. Other people argue. And then I put what the opposition thinks. 
And then I have the second sentence, however. And then that however transition word signifies that I'm about to say that I believe the opposite. However, personal freedom for teenagers is not the most important aspect to school. Uh, to school. Safety is the most important. So here I have addressing the other side and then refuting it. I'm gonna read it one more time. Some people argue that students should not be required to wear uniforms because they limit creative, creativity and personal freedom. However, personal freedom is not the most important aspect of a school. Safety is the most important. So that actually builds my credibility as an author, as a writer, because I'm showing that I understand the other side, but I still picked my side. Um, and that's going to build credibility and make people believe me more when I'm trying to persuade them. Building credibility as a writer is a really important aspect to being persuasive. Okay, so when you have your conclusion, first things first, put a counter argument, refute the counter argument, that's what we went over, and then restate your thesis. So here in the example, I restated my thesis. Clearly, students should be required to wear uniforms because it increases safety of a school and decreases bullying. Students' physical and mental health is the most important job of school staff. So I didn't repeat it in the exact same words. It needs to be, you need to have different syntax, different vocabulary, but having reinforcing or restating the thesis is important, but not copying it and putting it twice. That's a key right there. And then um, the last sentence of a persuasive essay, a good idea to put as the last sentence is the call to action. So the call to action is where you're telling the reader or urging the reader to go out and do something or to believe something or to think something in the real world. And that ends your essay on an energetic note where it's like you can do this after reading my position. Um, so the call to action for this paragraph would be so, Although it may not seem like very much fun, do not complain. Support school uniform policies in your local school. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back through the conclusion really quickly and then talk about no red ink and then we'll be done for today. So uh, read along with me. Some people argue that students should not be required to wear uniforms because they limit creativity and personal freedom. However, Personal freedom for teenagers is not the most important aspect to school. Safety is the most important. Clearly, students should be required to wear uniforms because it increases safety of school and decreases bullying. Students' physical and mental health is the most important job of a school staff. So although it might not seem like very much fun, do not complain. School Support school uniform policies in your local school. Um, so that call to action on the end there kind of gives you like a go out and do this. Um, okay. So that's it for the, the writing portion of the lesson. The no red ink assignment that is due tonight by midnight is also about counter argument. It's on no red ink. It's called counter argument. It's gonna reinforce what we talked about today. Um, and you'll be dragging and dropping like what's the thesis, what's the counter argument, and it should be quite simple. If you have any questions about um, the no red ink, please email me or message me on Teams. Um, and then the assignment on the hub that you'll be turning in today is a conclusion. So you'll just be writing a conclusion. It shouldn't take you too long. And then you'll have the work Thursday. And then of course we have no school Friday. So um, please let me know if you have any questions and I hope that you have a wonderful Wednesday.